Hi guys, Jack here. Welcome to this episode of Genius Network where I share with you some of the insights and stories from some of the greatest people I've had the privilege of connecting with on my journey as an entrepreneur. Today I'm sat here in Lingling, Hakkasan with Global Service Industry Director, Mr. Konstantin Zimmerman. How are you doing, sir? Very good. Thank you very much for the invitation. And, uh... I'm honored to be on your program. Well, this is it's extremely honored to have you here. Today, guys, I'm going to introduce you to a man which has a widespread of accolades. Uh, I'd like you just to tell the audience a little bit about yourself before we go any further. Um, yeah, as mentioned, my name is Konstantin. I'm a Swiss so by origin. All my life has been in restaurant business, and uh, I'm honored to be responsible for uh, running Ling Ling by Hakasan in Oslo. Perfect. So we first met when you and Mr. Sindra Nesheim created an absolutely flawless experience for the launch of my new project, Escape Barbershop, here in Oslo. And I remember thinking to myself, I want to bring my staff here not only to dine, but also to see the way this guy operates, because the experience that you created was flawless and so inspiring to my industry. It was incredible. Yeah, I guess it's one of the advantages if you have uh, customer service or um, to do with guests. Uh, we have a direct fee uh, direct feedback. Uh, you you know immediately. Um, you have kind of a result of what you're doing uh, in the expression of the guests, and uh, it can be fantastic and rewarding. It can be devastating, but that's what I like, especially in my industry. Uh, you always know what you do, what you do, what you've done. So you've always got control. Uh, yes, you can't control the emotions, but um, I guess if you are uh, genuinely interested in in uh, living your passion and please the guests feel uh, let the guests feel welcome and uh, on a way treat them how you want to be treated, then I guess it's uh, already a very very big chance to get a positive feedback. Absolutely. So you spoke a little bit about passion, which brings me to my next question. So you started off in Switzerland. How old were you when you first entered the industry? Um, I guess I have to go back to day zero. Uh, I mean, okay. I'm uh, born and raised in a restaurant. My parents wow. had a restaurant, and my first memories actually are uh, restaurant memories. And then uh, I started the professional co career um, by the age of 15, when I started my apprenticeship as a waiter in a in a very fine uh, palace hotel, and then I continue. Um, trained chef, uh, classic American bar and the administrative side and so I always try to keep uh, my knowledge uh, updated. So the first thing that you saw when you grew up was the restaurant industry? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, um, if, if I uh, try to remember my first memory ever, it was uh, uh, I was maybe two, maybe three years old, uh, wow. and then I was uh, sitting on the arm of my mother, and I remember it was in the late 70s, and then the chefs <laughs> passed by with the big silver platters, with the foie gras terrine, with the truffles, and I remember how they passed by and entering into the banquet room, but what I remember the most was the expression of the guests the by reactions. the time that the reaction, yeah, and nice. there is, wow, and I still hear it, and I guess this was... Uh, one of the major uh, in inspirations who made me get into this uh, industry. So you started off in a palace restaurant where they serve fragua. Yeah. Uh, how on earth does the bar get any higher than that? Because I started my apprenticeship in smaller salons. My mum taught me, then I progressed to the bigger salons. How do you set the bar higher than what you've already seen? Because it's nice to have external motivation, but if the bar's that high, what, 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 what did you take inspiration from? <laughs> no, I guess the advantage, if, um, and I was lucky, and I always was lucky to work in uh, very nice places where you have uh, yeah. top quality, top level. And uh, I mean, as well, I, I was uh, serving uh, pints in a very dark bar. <laughs> uh, the principal guest doesn't change. Um, uh, you have this guy in a bar who gets a pint, uh, he's as happy as uh, a royalty who gets served the food. And, uh, and I guess that's something which teach me in this uh, industry as well. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter where you're from or where your guests are from or what kind of, of uh, material level you are. I mean, happiness is, uh, has no cost. I completely agree with you, yeah. 100%. So we spoke a little bit about the dark side of the places that you were, like obviously when you first started, then you got up the level to the palaces. You're from Switzerland, which is known and renowned for absolute luxury. 
What's the competition like? Uh, I mean, the advantage uh, to to uh, grow up in Switzerland, uh, especially when it comes to the level of education, it's uh, very precisely. It's very based on discipline, and it's like a clockwork. Absolutely. And uh, I mean, it's, uh, you know, Swiss Swiss uh, watches. I mean, they are precise, and uh, I guess that's something teaches you and. I mean, no one had really the choice uh, where to be born, and I'm I'm blessed and I'm uh, lucky to have had this uh, opportunity to have this this level of education. And I guess uh, after a certain point, it's very nice to have it in the start. But at, uh, after a certain point, you're old enough, and then it's regardless where you're from, uh, you have to make uh, your own decisions and you have to make your own thoughts about it. Absolutely. So, from an educational perspective. Did you start off first as a bartender or a chef or vice versa? Because I know you're a qualified chef, right? Yes, I'm a classically trained chef, but I started uh, my career as an apprentice in service, so uh, front of house. And then um, I was interested to go to cover this lack of, in, uh, of uh, knowledge uh, by doing the apprenticeship of a chef, a classic... Uh, do, you, do you know, the funny thing about that is the fact that not only do you see what is like, like not only do you serve to your clients but you actually build in and see in what's being serving so do you guess slightly like like if, if a chef sends something out which you are about to take out because you're a qualified chef you're looking at it like yeah I'm not sure about this one <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean um, not to undermine the, the authorities <laughs> but uh, it has happened that uh, during service i uh, uh, sent the chef out of the kitchen, took okay. an apron and made the sauce myself. I just have wow. to, uh, I tell you, I'll show you how, how it's done. I mean, it was a bit, uh, in younger years, when I was a bit more uh, pushy, <laughs> but it has to be done because it was not the right quality and um, I was always working on on a, on a restaurant level where uh, you don't have to have much room for mistakes. Absolutely. And then uh, I didn't want to serve laziness. Absolutely. So quality and standards for you is optimum level at all times. Yeah, yeah, it is uh, very high graded. Absolutely. Yeah. So you started off as an educated individual, educating yourself in gastronomy, you become a qualified chef from Switzerland. Did you come straight to Norway? Or was there any work in between that transition? Um, it was. Uh, I has been. I have been in a couple of uh, countries and uh, was working on cruise ships, for wow. example. And by that time, I mean, uh, only in these uh, years of cruise ship, I was in uh, more than seventy countries uh, during that time. It was fantastic to see the world. It was hard work, but um, but uh, it was a very nice place to uh, get more experience as well. So, can you tell me? What is the difference between working on a ship to working on land? Um, yeah, you're literally, you're, you're sitting in the same boat. I mean, if you run out of coffee cups, you can't go to the <laughs> next shop to buy some coffee cups. So you, you, you have to organize yourself. And, um, and one of the most important points, you have your guests maybe 10 days, two weeks during, uh, every, day. during a, uh, every day during a cruise and then to, uh, to uh, surprise them every day. So it's quite a challenge. So, so what do you do to wow someone every day? Because I've had hands-on experience of you wowing me. The first place I send people <laughs> when they come to Oslo is to come and see Constantine <laughs> because it's an actual show. You know, it's an experience and an actual production, what you put together. And you blow my mind, but I come here maybe once every four weeks. Yeah. But like, so how, how on earth do you give someone the wow factor and deliver it to perfection every single day? What changes? Um, I mean, uh, first you you got kind of a connection with the with the guests, and that's what I meant with the direct feedback. And then um, you have this interaction. But the devil is in the details. For example, I had a guest. I uh, just uh, by passing by in the afternoon, I heard that she likes tiramisu. She was talking to her husband, and in the evening she got her tiramisu out of nothing, and she just wow, how did you know? And I just accidentally heard it. But that's this uh, small touch you can't buy. That's, you have to do it and uh, this is the small details which are uh, giving as well this uh, surprising effect to the guests. So you never actually switch off from work when you're on the cruise ships. You're, you're always actively working whether you're passing by you have to be alert you have to adapt 
like you said, the pressures involved in if you run out of coffee cups, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. I mean, it started already uh, the first day when the new the, the new crews arrived with the guests um, uh, at around one o'clock uh, in the afternoon. We received the the photographs from yeah. every guest. Uh, they have been made during the lifeboat drill, and then we had to learn all all the names until five o'clock. How many uh, guests? Uh, we had around two hundred ten guests uh, on each. So you had to remember two hundred names. Yeah. And was there any education provided by the cruise company to help you learn this this, this system of psychology and how you, how you learn all of these names? Um, uh, of course, uh, we, we made some tests uh, just to test your uh, knowledge and uh, just uh, it forces you a bit to, <laughs> to sit down. I mean, at the end, it, it uh, limits to those 40, 50 guests you have in your, uh, in your um, uh, station. But then... Um, uh, it is f very good to train the guests and just imagine, I mean, whenever you pass a guest in uh, the corridor, you address him by name and already that gives the, the guest such a nice feeling of being welcome, being recognized and then you have already this emotional part covered and then they will not judge you if you serve from the right or from <laughs> the left side because the, the, the yeah, personal that's... touch, it, it's already there. That's incredible. So we spoke a little bit about the cruise ships. I'm assuming on cruises you meet all different types of people, which brings us to our next question. You must have an extensive selection of clientele. Is there anyone you'd like to share with us right now who you think any of the audience watching would take great value from as an accolade? Um, as mentioned, I was blessed to always work on very good places and uh, the cruise ship I was working on was by the time the uh, world's most luxury cruise line, so we have wow. quite a nice level of, uh, of high profiles and um, I mean uh, Officially, I forgot the names, <laughs> but um, um, it teach me one thing, uh, and it's a very, uh, very valuable uh, experience. Whatever you see in magazines or on TV or on the newspaper about celebrities, uh, don't believe the hype. Yeah, uh, you don't know them until you meet them, and of course, it's not questioning what they do in a private but uh, in, in the intimacy of a restaurant you meet the guests on a personal level and I had to re-evaluate uh, a lot uh, almost opinions. all the opinions yeah. I had uh, given from uh, multimedia before so that was a very nice um, experience very valuable for me that's incredible so from an employee's perspective you conquered the cruise ships you met various clientele now from a management position is there anything service wise that you've been asked to do that you feel people could get value from and inspired from um, the, the finest uh, moment it's actually when a guest tell me you make me feel special and you made my day because that's something, of course, the technique, the knowledge you have to have, uh, yeah. especially in, in uh, these days, everyone has all the access to all uh, information about wine, about food, about technique, and that's something which is expected. But to touch them on a personal uh, level, because mm -hmm. I really love my guests genuinely, I want to yeah. give them uh, an experience because they are my guests, they are my place, even though I'm just an employee. All the places I've been working, they were a bit my own. Absolutely. And, uh, and uh, I wanted to give them uh, the, the experience, and that's again what I meant before, you have the direct feedback. It's so rewarding, which gives you uh, another energy to survive uh, 16 hours a day uh, with uh, 30 kilometers of walking. Absolutely. And uh, it, uh, it, it, you see it in the eyes right away. And, and for example, you have a restaurant uh, packed with guests, 300 guests, and you have maybe one couple. It might, might not even be your fault, but they might have uh, a, a certain kind of frustration and you can't change them on my way home. I mean, I'm not thinking about about the two hundred ninety-eight dollars, it's this too. Why Absolutely. couldn't I make it, friend? And and I mean, that's a, that's a bit the attitude you have to have in this uh, industry. So you individualize and personalize every single client that comes to the door because everyone's different, right? It is yes, everyone is different. And someone told me 
and I know we spoke about this before, but you're an extremely modest guy. I was told that you created a service for the King of Norway. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm honored to, uh, to be uh, responsible for the service organization for uh, the federal receptions uh, hosted by His Majesty. And I guess one of my uh, um, yeah, masterpiece, uh, I like to say that it was uh, the birthday of, uh, of the King of Norway and it was uh, the royals from Europe, six kings, seven queens, and it was uh, amazingly, everything live broadcasted on TV, it was kind of a pressure, but it was, uh, I mean, it was fantastic because uh, they have seen everything, they have been everywhere, they tasted everything, and uh, to, to make them uh, give something special, and uh, it was not, it, it was not uh, the meaning they have to remember me I just wanted to make a good evening and no and there was no room for mistake absolutely no. especially for the royal family <laughs> <laughs> yeah yes but it was uh, amazing what what I did then uh, I organized a waiter from each county to each uh, royal couple the, the Dutch couple had a Dutch waiter and the Belgium a Belgium and so on and it was a very nice detail and all those um, uh, majesties they mentioned that towards the Norwegian king and it was really nice to, to hear so they recognized it That's but uh, it, it, it's not the meaning to make myself important because uh, I, I like to be in the background but I like uh, the fact they appreciate it. Absolutely. And they have it all. Incredible. Yeah. So if you take yourself back to when you first started educating yourself in Switzerland, at that point, did you ever imagine that you'd be creating receptions for the royal family? <laughs> Uh, no, but but uh, I always worked in uh, in restaurant with a high profile. I always was blessed yeah. and lucky. So um, um, it's it's not something I was heading for. It's something uh, I've been asked for after a while, and that uh, was that showed me as well that uh, I do something right. Absolutely. And um, and of course you have the, the I'm grown up in Switzerland, very precise, very disciplined. Uh, the things are, which are very important, especially for this kind of reception. But, but as mentioned, uh, I mean, of course, the, the royal family is the royal family, but uh, every guest has the same um, personal reaction on uh, being happy or not. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's a, an absolutely incredible factor to bring to the mm -hmm. table as well, the individuality of people, regardless of which way of life they're mm -hmm. from. A yeah. customer is a customer and their happiness is their happiness. Exactly. So in regards to the restaurant management side of things uh, and the management position that you've had, a lot of people see what I call the Constantine show where the production of everything is at optimum, optimum level, the customer service is there. But what about the stuff that people don't see, the stuff that goes on behind the scenes, the management, the administration, the accountancy? How do you find time to balance the, the wow factor blowing someone away and that management position at the same time. Uh, it, uh, it means very long days. Uh, so my day starts in the morning and then I have this, I call it the administrative part of my yeah. job. It's with uh, the paperwork. It's, uh, I mean, we have to make money. It's, an, it's a business as well, of course. The preparation, it's uh, the ordering, it's, it's uh, the dealing with um, the human resources and so on. But uh, to be honest, the guests are not interested in that, to see that. I mean, all those things we prepare, we get ready, and then once we open the restaurant and it's show, as a show time, yeah, it, it's still a genuine joy we try to, to give to our guests, but uh, you have to be prepared. That's a very important point, but the guests, they don't care about that. It's nothing uh, the guests should see, actually. They're Absolutely coming for the show. agree with you. Yeah. 110%. You know, it's, it's amazing because there's a, there's a very cliche saying about Everyone sees Tiger Woods hit a hole in one, but no one sees him swinging the club a thousand times per day. Yeah. The fact is, he's a showman, and, that, and that's what he's getting paid for. And I think as entrepreneurs or managers, that's one thing that we should really, really internalize. The fact that we are here, we're privileged. These people coming through our door, they're here to see the show. So that's incredible. That's one of the biggest reasons why I love bringing staff here, just to see you work, because it's the mindset, the mentality. It's absolutely incredible. Thank so you. from that perspective, we just touched base on the fact that there is a lot to do, there's long hours. What sacrifices are involved in your job? 
I mean, it's not a particular family friendly industry. <laughs> I mean, uh, I have two kids, and uh, and uh, it, it's uh, sometimes hard because um, I'm working those hours where everyone else is off. Absolutely. But uh, on the other side, uh, I'm born and raised in a restaurant. All my life has been in the restaurant business, so I'm used to that. So uh, I guess it would be weird to have a different schedule on a day. Yeah. But the sacrifice, it's, uh, it's long days and it, uh, it goes a bit on the privacy even. Um, the mother of my kids, she says, you're, you're more constant in, uh, at work than you are beside, <laughs> as, as strange it sounds. But uh, um, I mean, it's my life. It's, it's not only a job, it's a lifestyle. So, so, so the best times that you ever got on as a couple is when you were serving her food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, she always has been happy. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So in your management position then, is there anything that you do ritual-wise to keep a good positive mindset of health and well-being? Um, my day starts and don't laugh uh, with uh, yoga. Just, uh, I mean, I have all the hectic, the pulsating life. I have a lot of people, noise, music, light, and long hours, and a lot of hectic and uh, a lot of emotions. But my day starts very, very calm. I guess it's uh, the balance or the Absolutely. contrast uh, I need, and uh, just to get uh, to get ready for the day. And uh, I like. The, the ritual uh, in general. I mean, even the service should be uh, ritualizing more and more. I mean, all the, the technical mm -hmm. knowledge or the knowledge about groceries, knowledge about wine, the guests have access to everyone, but what they want to have, it's the a ritual. They want to have something touches their uh, soul. And I guess that's a, a very nice development in, in this industry that it's, um, you know, those days you're not, you're not allowed to talk to guests, they're all where the guests they want, the, the waiter or the host being part of the whole experience. And I have this uh, ritual in the morning to get started in the day and often in the evening when I come home I like to play music. Yes, and it's uh, a very yes. peaceful way to uh, express uh, emotions and uh, that uh, keeps me alive. This is the million dollar <laughs> question, right? You create services for the royal family, you work how many hours in one day? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it easily can be somewhere between 12 okay. and 18 hours. So I between mean, 12 and 18 hours a day, service for the royal family, finding a balance for yourself, how on earth do you know how to play six instruments? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> it, I mean, I, it always, uh, I always loved music, and I guess it has something with music mm. to do as well, uh, to do that work. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I, I play not for uh, public, <laughs> it's, it's only yeah. for my own good, and uh, but uh, it, oh. it's really uh, uh, rewarding me, it's giving me a kind of a peace, and I really can let out, and I mean, I, I work with, uh, I play with headphones, uh, so... <laughs> so you, you play all those instruments, how many languages do you speak? Uh, six. Six instruments. So every time you learn a new instrument, you learn a new language to go with it. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I play and play. I mean, as I said, my schedule is quite tight. Uh, I don't have that much time, but I like playing and uh, I like language. That's, that's some of the one of the very important thing I tell my kids as well. I mean, learn languages because you can't download them and communication. It's very, very uh, important, and uh, it's it's always a. Um, uh, an, ex, uh, an asset to address someone in their language and even if it's a few words and uh, you can't everyone is speaking English or Mandarin I mean it's the, the, the big languages but any language is important and that's that's something I would uh, recommend to everybody languages so you're multilingual you play multiple instruments management positions service for the king I want to ask you what your future goals are, but does it get any higher <laughs> than that? Oh, yeah, you always can uh, get any higher. It's always a new, a new markets. It's always new information. I guess uh, there's several things I could imagine to do for the 
time being it's um, Ling Ling it's quite a fresh project and uh, um, on the way I'm not finished with Ling Ling yet I have a lot of things uh, I want to uh, realize uh, but um, I mean it, it progress is always there I mean, uh, in terms of knowledge, in terms of suddenly you have an event. I mean, you mentioned the, the Royal Bank. Yeah, that's one thing. But on the other side, it, it's very fun to make a catering for a festival of 50,000 people. And it's so many things in this industry which yeah. are, from a logistic organizing side, very interesting. Um, and as well from the direct personal contact to the guest and uh, I mean it, it's a never-ending story so it's so powerful uh, so just before we close what advice would you give to any young entrepreneur any employee any apprentice watching this video right now to achieve success from my own experience if you love something S uh, stick to it because uh, if you have the passion it, it's uh, it's as well a, a quality and it's a, a genuine uh, feeling you provide to your custom customers to your to your guests I mean uh, as well I mean believe in miracles but don't wait for one and uh, it, it wow. is um, uh, it, it is a lot of work. Keep up the knowledge, learn languages, but uh, I mean, keep on. Do you know, mate? It's an absolute privilege to have you here. Not only a privilege to have you on the network, just to call you my friend. Thank uh, you very I'm much. sure same everyone, same. honestly, I'm sure everyone has taken the level of inspiration from you that I do. So this is Constantine Zimmerman. We'll put his links for social media below, guys. He's one of the most inspiring geniuses I've ever met. So thank you for tuning in to Ludlow Network. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit the button below, and we'll stay together for future progress. Thanks very much, Constantine. Thank you. One more thing before we go. I heard there's a great saying in Ling Ling Hakkasan. Have no fear. Constantine is here. My man. <laughs> <laughs>